Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to introduce you to a brand new scheduling library that will almost certainly become the most popular scheduling .NET library. If you've been using Quartz or Hangfire, this will almost certainly replace it. It kind of fixes all the bad things of both libraries and combines everything into one. So in this video I'm going to show you what it is, how it works and why it is so interesting to me and potentially to you. So what do I have here? I have an empty CS Proj. We have a small API. It doesn't really have anything. And I'm going to add scheduling here. Now, the library I'm going to be adding is called Ticker Q. I don't know why Q, I guess Ticker existed, but that is the library we're going to be using in this video. Now, Ticker Q is an open source project. I highly recommend you give it a star on GitHub. I'm not going to give it a star yet because every time I give a star, I spoil an upcoming video. So I'm going to give it a star when this video comes out. But Ticker Q, very quickly, it launched like a month ago and very quickly rose to half a thousand of stars. Please give it a star if you like what you're going to see in this video. It does so many things right. It has a dashboard. It has persistence with EF core. It has stateless core with source generation. It's very, very fast. Truly async as well. And if you work with things like Hangfire, you know how annoying these things can be. And we're going to talk about the comparison with Hangfire and Quartz later. But for now, let's just implement it. So what I'm going to add is three packages. The ticker Q package, which I'm going to upgrade in this case. The dashboard package, so it's a bit modularized as well as the entity framework core because I want persistence. I want to be able to scale this. I want to be able to restart jobs after the scheduling service is started or whichever service really started. So all that can be done with these three packages over here. And then you have this utilities package, which we want to look in this video. But if this video does well, we might explore in the future. So now we have this. And the first thing we need to do is we need to add a connection to our database because we will be storing all the jobs we will be running for scheduling on the database. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to say use Postgres in my case and use my DB context. So I'm going to go ahead and create that class over here. Now for now, I'm just going to leave it as a DB context. I'm not going to implement it yet. I'm just going to import everything. And I'm going to start with a very basic setup for ticker queue. So as you might imagine, we have a builder.services.add ticker queue here and then some options. We say add operational store and we point to the DB context we added. In this case, it's this. And then we can configure a couple of things, one for migrations and one for canceling missed tickers on application restart. So we can have some application lifetime hooks just to deal with things that happen during restart. And then we're adding the dashboard and we're adding the dashboard authentication to log into the dashboard. We're choosing basic auth, which you can configure in the app settings.json by adding the ticker queue basic auth file and then username, admin, password, admin in this case. I'm going to put the code for this in the description down below. Uh, in the description down below, you will also find the 30% discount code until the end of summer. We're running a massive discount on Dome Train. We call it Summer 30. At checkout, you can get 30% off everything. Check it out. Subscriptions, courses, bundles, up for grabs. Give it a go. See if you like it. So now that we have this setup, the other thing we need to do is say use sticker queue here on the app front. And really, that's it. Now, we do have to configure the DB context, and there are actually a few things we need to configure. So over here, as you can see, we have a bunch of configurations. We have the time ticker configurations, the cron ticker configurations, the cron ticker occurrence configurations. All of this configuration needed due to how ticker is running the job. So you can have a time-based ticker, run it at this point, or a cron-based ticket, where we have a cron expression, and that expression is converted into every how often something should happen. Or we can use the apply configuration from assembly over here to just scan for configuration if we want to. We're not going to do that. We're just going to apply everything manually, but you can grab the code and try this for yourself. Now, like I already said, I have a database over here. It doesn't really have anything. It is empty, but I do need to create migrations for Ticker. So I will go to the terminal and I'm going to say .NET EF migrations add Ticker queue initial create on my DB context. So I'll go ahead and say start the build. It's going to scan everything, build it and create migrations. As you can see, they are put here. And then all I need to do for this to work is say .NET EF database update ticker queue initial create. This will now run my migrations. As you can see, everything is done. We have two things. We have the public schema over here, which should have been updated with the migration history, as well as the ticker schema over here with all the scheduling related things. So cron tickers, time tickers and the cron time occurrence. So with all that setup of the way, let's just run this and take a look at what we currently have. So as you can see, if I go to ticker queue and I log in, now I can see 
my jobs, my actions, my functions. I can see time tickers. I can see cron tickers over here. I can add new. Well, I, to add new, I sort of need to have some to add. Currently, I have nothing. So why don't we just go ahead and create a job? I'm going to start with possibly the simplest thing I can do. I'm going to create a new class over here called my jobs. Now, the way you define a job on Ticker is in two ways. You can either have a time job or a cron job. So first, let's say I have like a job that runs every, I don't know, every whenever that cleans up the logs, right? Whatever that might do in the background. Now, in my case, I just want to write something in the console, so I would say cleaning up logs, but actually I want to show you that I have dependency injection here. So I can say read only I logger my jobs logger, create that in the constructor, and then you can use it here. So you're going to say log information, which is really cool. And now this can be a job by just saying ticker function. Then I give it a name. The name I'm going to give it is clean up logs. And then I can also give it a cron expression, as you can see over here. So I, I could just complete it like this, but this won't work. We'll throw an error because AI generated a cron job that doesn't really exist. So I can just leave it like this for this demo and still run the application and go back to the dashboard and show you how I can actually trigger this from the dashboard. So over here, I can come. I have my job and I have the add new button. I can click on this and I can choose my function, clean up logs. I can say cleans up the logs. I can say three retries in case of a failure, and I can say back off for one minute, then for two minutes, and then for, for 10 minutes or five and 10. I can pass a request object if the function accepts a request object. And then I can also have a date input to say, well, this will run now. Actually, I'm gonna say execute this immediately. So do not wait for it. And then I'm just gonna create it. I'm creating it, as you can see, completed, executed. And if I go to the console, you will see cleaning up logs. So I scheduled from the dashboard a job that executed immediately. I could have scheduled it as well for a day in the future, but we don't have forever over here. I just want to show you what you can do with this. Now, what if you had an object you want to pass down? Well, in this case, you have a ticker function context object, and you can wrap it to whatever you want to pass down. In this case, I'm just going to pass down a simple point object with an X and a Y just for demonstration purposes. I'm still going to bring in the console, but in this case, I'm accepting that object when I'm running the job. So if I run it again, this job now requires a point object. If I go here, update, and I say create new, and this time I choose with object, this field is now available. I have sample data. I can press this to move it here. I'm going to ignore the is empty, and I'm going to just pass down to random numbers to be passed down to this job. This will be serialized, stored, and everything, I still have my intervals, one minute, two seconds, press enter to add whatever, three, here we go. That's a bit of a weird retry, actually. Let's let's try this one. Here we go. Uh, again, short description if you want, and I'm going to say execute immediately in this case. I'm just going to say run it, and as you can see, job is done, job is run. You can see all the scheduled ones here, and you can see method called with these parameters. So the parameters were passed from the dashboard that was scheduled from there on a predefined job, and they will just run. Now, something like this is fine if you just schedule jobs straight away from the dashboard, but what if you want to have a repeated job that happens every one minute, for example? Well, this is when cron comes in. You can have a cron expression over here. This means every one minute. So if I run this over here, then as you're going to see, we started hopefully in a minute, and I'm not going to wait, but I will show you on the dashboard just to see how things look as things are happening. If I refresh over here, you can now see the job. It's every minute. You can see when it's created, when it's coming again. You can see analytics over here. You can see when is the next execution. It is in a few seconds. In fact, it will be any time now. And you can do things like editing it as well. Of course, editing it here will invalidate whatever you have in the next restart because it doesn't persist between restarts. If you were to create that job, which you can, by the way, by just picking the function, passing your own custom expression based on the same format and then rescheduling it, then it would be persisted between restarts. Otherwise, this is considered as a system thing. And if we go back to the code, you will see that, yep, one minute in, it happened, or every minute. So that is all really, really cool. But how do you programmatically schedule a job, whichever type of job that might be? Well, let me show you with an endpoint as an example. This might look a bit convoluted to start with, but trust me, it's very easy. So here what we have, we have a post request, so I can actually pass down the data. We have a schedule endpoint, and we have the point we're passing down, X and Y. Then the I time ticker manager, 
with the time ticker object. And then we're passing down the manager because we're creating a new time ticker. You could have a cron ticker too. Remember, time ticker, cron ticker. Time ticker is like a timed thing in the future. Cron ticker is something that will happen every whatever you define. Uh, and then here we say, here's a request, create a request from this point. You can have other parameters here. Then say the execution time. So you want it to be a specific time. So date time now dot add seconds and we're going to add 10 seconds. We name the function and you can point to the function name as well. You can say name of and point to the specific method with object, which is a bit safer. So you can say my jobs and then with object, a description, retries, retry intervals, and that's it. So if I just run this now and I go to Insomnia, I can go here and click the schedule endpoint with these parameters again. And as you can see, 200. And we can wait in 10 seconds to see the test with object because now it's scheduled to run 10 seconds from now. And as you can see, it run. So that's all amazing. Honestly, it does so many things. Well, there's so, so many more features like you can have a global extension exception handler. So when things go wrong at your jobs, you can say uh, options dot exception handler and point to an exception handler handling what happens when things fail in exceptions and so, so much more. I just want to touch a bit on how this compares with Hangfire and Quotes. Now, of course, this is written by Ticker, so it is inherently biased, but as a feature comparison, uh, what you get here is a pretty comprehensive thing. Of course, you can see that, yeah, Ticker does everything amazingly and the others sort of lack in some way. But if you actually go in there and you dive into some things, you will understand that Ticker does so, so, so many things from how it handles async support compared to, you know, Hangfire, which is a mess, to queuing, to scheduling, to, to threading, to the EF core integration over here and tons of other things. I mean, I will put a link in the description for this because I think it's worth taking the time to take a look at this yourself. But compile time safety with Rosin analyzers and source generators, which, you know, we saw with the cron. Zero reflection, which is massive, by the way. It's a massive, massive achievement. Native DI support, known for job activators, like you would in other places. A flexible accessibility, plugin style ticker model, like, it's, it's such good design and it's so well thought out that it's not surprising at all that so many people are moving at this and they really, really like it. I highly recommend you give it a sound on GitHub. It is really, really impressive. I think this will be one of the next biggest .NET projects and I'd love for you to try it, see what you think and leave a comment down below and let them know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching and as always, keep coding.